All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we tonight we're doing elections um, for our, our annual board elections. So the first thing I'm going to go over is our election process um, from the looks of it and based on our uh, nominations form. It seems that it will go pretty quickly, but I want to be clear on the process and we're going to read from our bylaws verbatim so that it makes sense. And so you understand what our bylaws say about how we conduct elections. Um, so I apologize that this will be pretty boring, but I want to make sure uh, that folks are all on the same page. So tonight, uh, so you may remember we updated our bylaws in 2021. Um, currently, we have a chair and a vice chair. I'm the chair, Paula's the vice chair, a webmaster, uh, Jenny, uh, a secretary and a treasurer. And then we have seven at-large board seats for a total of 12 board members. Uh, tonight, we'll be electing a secretary and a treasurer and seven at-large board members. So all of our board members, the, the seven of them, are elected every year for a one-year term. Officers are elected for a two-year term, and then the chair serves a three-year term. Um, so in two years, we'll have a chair's election that will be held again with the secretary and treasurer. So the chair's position rotates with two different officers uh, each election. Um, so uh, I'm gonna just read really quickly the role of the secretary, um, and I have some commentary on it, but I'm gonna read first from the bylaws. So the secretary shall keep the minutes of all the meetings of the council and the board of directors. The secretary shall prepare minutes or recordings of meetings prior to the next general election, uh, make, make them freely available and distribute them. In the event of resignation, absence, disability, or death of the secretary, any remaining balance of the term will be filled by a candidate elected from the membership of the council at the next general meeting. The fulfillment of this vacancy does not constitute a term. Um, so we're also electing a treasurer. The treasurer shall co-sign with the chair or vice chair all contracts, checks, and other papers when so authorized by the board of directors shall present a report at least quarterly to the general members and shall follow a financial control policy established by the board. When staffed, some of the responsibility may be delegated to staff, doesn't apply to us, in the event of resignation, absence, disability, or death of the treasurer, any remaining balance of the term will be filled by a candidate elected from the membership of the council at the next general meeting. Uh, the fulfillment of this vacancy does not constitute a term. And then lastly, we're electing seven at-large board members. There shall be a board of directors which shall conduct the business of the council under the general direction of the membership. The board of directors may make such rules as it deems necessary for the conduct of its affairs, provided they do not conflict with these bylaws or any future amendments. Um, there are a couple of things that I want to note. So on the secretary's position, since we are all online and we're able to record these meetings, we don't keep formal minutes, but we do keep recordings of all of our meetings. Um, one of the other roles of the secretary is to take attendance at our meetings. Um, so just counting who's in the audience in person and who's online. Um, and then one of the other responsibilities is with all of these present or with all of these presentations and the information we have, we often get like PowerPoints, flyers, things that need to be distributed after the meeting. The secretary will work with Jenny to make sure those are gathered and then put out uh, for the membership. And then uh, one other note on our treasurer. So Catherine's position, Catherine's our current treasurer. Uh, the treasurer's position is open. Catherine is filling the term of Cody Egan, who was our treasurer and moved out of, I think he moved to Ogden uh, and had to step down at the beginning of last year. So, um, and Catherine is running for re-election, but uh, we'll get into that in a moment. So the next thing I wanted to go over, um, and I'm gonna have Paulo read from the bylaws. Uh, this is section 10.2, which deals with how we count the ballots um, in our elections. Am I speaking into, into this thing? Just not? speak loudly. If you're in person, just speak loudly. All right. <clears throat> so the procedure of the counting of the hand vote shall be made by the chair or in the absence of a presiding officer, uh, other person delegated by the general membership. Uh, this person shall announce the result of the vote as soon as the vote is counted. Counting of ballot votes shall be made by two members from the board of directors and three persons from the general membership of the council. The council chair, or if necessary, a delegate from the official counting party shall announce the result of the ballot vote as soon as the results are determined. Okay. Um, since the secretary and treasurer's positions are open tonight, we're not going to have either of our secretary or treasurer participate in the ballot counting. So Paulo and I will be helping count. And then we have three people from the membership um, can help with counting when we get to that point. If you're 
uh, willing to do that, it would be helpful. Um, so we have a couple of presentations tonight. Um, we're going to have first Love Your Block present, and then we have an air quality survey uh, Dr. Tabitha Benny will be presenting. So um, we're going to have you start, um, and then we'll go over to you, Tabitha, after uh, in-person presenter. Uh, come on up. Where would you like me to stand? Uh, it's probably better if you stand on this okay. side. The mic will pick you up better for folks online. And the camera's right there. I know my handles now. <laughs> uh, give me just one second and I will okay. start your PowerPoint. I can remember how to do this. Awesome. Thank you very much for lending me everyone's ear. Um, I'm Chamada Hernandez. I'm a Love Your Block fellow for Salt Lake City, and I'm here to talk to you all about Love Your Block. Sorry. All good. So a little bit of background about Love Your Block. Um, we're a program that's funded by John Hopkins and Cities of Service. Um, we we're actually one of eight cities that was awarded $100,000 to carry out a kind of a mini grant process that's focused solely out here on the west side. So all west side communities of Salt Lake City are eligible to this fund. And our purpose is kind of to draw residents, communitizations, and city, city leadership together in order to kind of empower the community and make the community uh, have a say in you know, what projects they would like to see going on. Um, we do have a few example projects you that our funds are typically used for art, vacant lot cleanups, pedestrian accommodations, um, uh, porch repairs. So the soccer repairs are pretty common ask, especially in this new cycle. Um, and essentially anything else that the community can think of um, with a few stipulations. Next slide, please. So just to give a few examples. Uh, we are just wrapping up year one. Um, the Glendale Alert Community Learning Center is actually awarded the full 2500 in order to uh, kind of revitalize the garden in, the, in their space, which is a heavily used space and love space by many community members. Um, they were actually able to gain a partner Home Depot, which was able to donate about $10,000. Um, so there's a lot of potential within these projects. You can draw a lot of partners in to make it even bigger than you could even expect it. Um, the Popular Grove Community Council was able to uh, do some placemaking. So uh, at the Groove in the Grove, uh, they were holding kind of a little contest, having residents submit photos of what they believe represents Popular Grove and what makes Popular Grove so special. Um, currently, the banners are in the making, will be hung up on 4th South. Uh, the Central Compassion Center uh, has a old playground that we were able to revitalize, remulch. Um, Councilmember Pooley is actually there to help. Um, sees a lot of action. The, the Central Compassion Center does a lot for community weekly food drives and clothing drives. Um, the Jayhawks Youth Group. Uh, was awarded funding for a community tool shed. And next slide, please. So we just have a few requirements. Um, you must be a Westside Salt Lake City resident. Um, you must be willing to incorporate volunteers into your project. This is one of our key components to our grant. Um, projects that heavily incorporate volunteers and community are oftentimes the strongest. Um, you have to abide by our spending guidelines, which can be found on our website. Um, we'll discuss those in a little bit as well. Um, you must address the issue of deterioration decay of urban areas or natural areas as well. Um, and for cycle number two, which is the cycle that we're in right now, projects must complete it, must be completed by June 30th of this year. Slide, please. So that QR code right there, if you want to put your phones out, scan it. It's also uh, I have flyers in case anybody wants it afterwards. Um, we'll take you directly to our website, which has our application some spending guidelines as well. Um, but consultations are strongly encouraged. So by the time that you know selection process starts, your application is as strong as can be and hopefully is awarded. Um, we do take applications online, also in person by paper at the Glendale Library, which is actually right here, and the Day Riverside Library. You can actually also do a phone call. Um, we are happy to kind of accommodate whatever method you want to do. Um, video submissions are also accepted. Um, and we, our second cycle actually closes January 30th at midnight. So the time is picking. Um, and last side. And any questions? Our contact information is right there, just in case anything does come up after the fact. Um, we're pretty available by phone, text, um, whatever you all need. Do you guys, um, the Wasatch Garden mm -hmm. group, would, would this be something that you guys could? Could partner with them as long as you have volunteers. I know there's a plot of land that they're thinking of revitalizing mm -hmm. just north of the storm center. Is that is this something that that would could work with 
with that big of a company, or does it need to be like small individual? Oh no, things? we're able to partner with whoever, and you're able to essentially bring into the program. Um, we actually just had a application come through at Mary Jackson. They have a garden plot that's ran over by uh, Wasatch Community Gardens, um, and they're looking for some funding as well. So that is also within our wheelhouse. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No project too small, too big. As long as it's been our, to be noted, our new maximum amount is $2,000 for this cycle, but you can request as little as $250. Quick question. Are you going to clarification on this? Uh, let's say there's a bigger project, mm -hmm. and multiple people apply for parts of this yeah. bigger project. Could potentially, let's say, um, get more money that way uh, if it's a larger project. Uh, then maybe it's three thousand mm -hmm. dollars, but there's multiple applications that piece together something yeah. larger. Is that a possibility or not? So typically, our standard is one like grant per project because we don't want to focus solely on one project. We like to be able to do as much as we can. However, you are more than welcome to apply for other cycles down the road because we do have one more remaining cycle with the funds that we do currently have. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Questions. Uh, any questions online? Awesome. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. all right. Uh, before we move on to the next presenter, I neglected at the beginning when I was talking about the election to talk about the process for nominations. So we have an online form. If you're online and would like to run for one of our positions, uh, fill out the Google form that we will share in the chat. And then if you're here in person and you haven't filled out that form in advance of the meeting, uh, you can nominate yourself. We have a nomination form that we just need you to fill out. We just need your name, email, uh, and phone number so we can contact you after the election. Um, with that, we'll move on to Tabitha. Great. Thank you all. Um, let me just share my screen really quickly. Oh, great. Okay, um, so my name is Tabitha Benny, and I really appreciate everyone's time uh, today. I am a professor over at the University of Utah, and we are currently working with a team of researchers um, at the University of Utah, as well as several of the chambers uh, here in Utah. In fact, uh, the director of uh, the Utah Chambers generally is also on our research team. And we've been working with the chamber uh, to address questions around how the air quality in Utah is actually affecting uh, businesses in a variety of ways. So we've started about a year ago um, um, meeting and consulting with the chambers about how to inform um, businesses and commerce from different industries in the state about the problem of air quality and to gather information that could be used to develop uh, better legislation and to better inform businesses and to also assess uh, the needs of businesses around the idea of air quality. So in particular, we started working with the Salt Lake Valley and South Salt Lake Chambers to pilot a survey. Um, and we're really trying to assess in this survey how air quality impacts recruitment, retention, and productivity for these businesses and industries. We also include an assessment about the various ways that businesses are impacted as well as prior research uh, that we've done. We'd like to draw a comparison between how Utah's perceive uh, air quality uh, to match it up with realities or the reactions that might um, best sort of motivate people to take action around air quality. So the goals of this survey are to mostly inform local businesses. The chamber hopes to use this to build curriculum or information sessions around air quality, but also to gather some consensus from Utah businesses that can be used to alert policymakers about baseline impacts on businesses and to allow researchers throughout the state to apply and integrate their expertise to develop emerging solutions that are appealing to businesses. One thing that we know about legislation is um, it has to be something that businesses are willing to do, both from a cost perspective, but also from a feasibility perspective. And so part of the idea is to test new concepts around air quality. Um, the findings and the proposed solutions will develop as a team will be communicated through the Chamber of Commerce and its statewide partners to local communities and also to legislators. We're hoping even key stakeholders in the state uh, will get on board and we hope this will help to support a more healthy and informed policymaking process around air quality and one that's more durable because businesses are able to incorporate these ideas um, as well. 
So the the um, survey itself is a simple uh, one page uh, email generally that we send out. It's been sent out already through the chambers themselves, but we're hoping to reach out to individual communities, especially those that maybe have less access uh, to the survey itself or those who might be situated in communities that are uh, at greater risk of, of air quality impacts. So if you are a business owner of any type, or if you're a CEO, or even working in, in HR or any specific um, um, areas of business, we'd love to hear from you. Um, most people actually qualify to participate in the survey. It's quite short. It's only about 10 minutes or less. Most people average about an eight-minute response rate. Uh, but we're really hoping to get a good variety of people participating. And so your help um, in spreading the survey and also your help in answering the survey would be a great uh, help to us in, in completing this project and getting more information about what will work and what will hurt in terms of uh, commerce in Utah. So that's it. Simple and quick. Uh, but we thank you for uh, your time here. And also, please feel free again to share. Um, this will be a useful addition to our survey. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions online? Just feel free to unmute and ask your question. All right. Uh, thank you for your time. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and we will share the link uh, to the survey. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda, um, I wanted to spend some time to talk a little bit about some of the what the council has been able to do the last year, uh, last couple of years. Uh, and then what some of the priorities that we've identified for 2023 are. Um, for anybody that's kind of on the fence and trying to decide if you'd like to be involved, um, thought it would be helpful to kind of share what we're working on so that you can see uh, where you might fit and if you have interest in the, the work that we're doing. Um, so over the last couple of years, the council has created a couple of different committees, and I'm going to start with our existing committees and then talk about some future ones that we're, uh, we hope to have. Um, so last year, we created a Glendale Arts Committee that is currently chaired by Sarah Wolf, one of our at-large board members. And as an at-large board member, um, the expectation is that you participate in uh, different committees that are happening. So uh, the Arts Committee last year, in the last year, we've been able to, we hosted Art at the Confluence, which was a fun event held at Three Creeks Confluence that celebrated arts and culture in Glendale. Uh, we also completed a mural for a teacher who passed away of cancer in uh, 2021, um, Jess Schroeder at Riley Elementary School, um, and then helped create an outdoor learning space there through different grants. Uh, this year, the, the Arts Committee is working on painting some traffic calming murals out in front of Dual Immersion Academy, Parkview Elementary, and on 800 West and about 1200 South. Um, it's on 800 West, though. Um, and then also the Jordan River Trail, uh, if you've been on there, you probably have noticed the large wood signs that are on there. Um, we're looking at updating the artwork. Some of it's fallen into disrepair and been damaged. Um, so we have funding to be able to update those um, and just make, uh, just bring more public artwork to Glendale. Uh, and then we're also working on organizing Art at the Confluence again, April 22nd this year. Um, so we, we also, Paulo has been working the last year on creating a Friends of Glendale Parks group to get folks volunteering in our parks and hopefully raise some funding to support different needs in our parks. Um, I don't know if you want to say more about that, but it's in progress. We're doing our best. Yeah. Uh, and then we also have Keep Glendale Beautiful, uh, which Stephanie has been leading for the last year. Keep Glendale Beautiful. Uh, organizes cleanups um, and beautification efforts in the neighborhood. So every month on the uh, the Wednesday after this meeting, so the fourth Wednesday of the month at six o'clock, uh, we do a community cleanup. So our next one will be next week uh, if you're available to join us. And we have all the equipment, we have all the stuff you need, um, just show up. And so a couple of future projects that we're interested in looking at this year, if you are interested, um, we would really like to have a better connection with our education system. Um, so folks that have kids in schools that are really interested in connecting with our school board and school district, that's something we'd really like to do. And we're hoping that our education committee can work with our school board member to attend these meetings as well, if not every month, uh, at least quarterly. And then the, the last one is emergency preparedness, looking at creating um, so just some general emergency preparedness for the community, offering CERT courses, maybe hosting blood drives, 
um, different things like that in the neighborhood to just promote emergency preparedness. Uh, this is not a full accounting of everything that we can do. And if you have ideas or interests that you wanna bring to the council, uh, being a board member is a great way to do that. So this by no means is the only thing that you can do, um, but it's just a list of some of the options. And then uh, the other thing that Paula has been working on is a transportation committee. So this one, uh, this spring, you'll see some information coming out from us about an active transportation plan that Paulo and our intern Will have been working on um, for the neighborhood. So Glendale should have uh, an active transportation plan to hopefully make it a little bit safer for pedestrians and really just promote uh, people powered transit here in Glendale. So I don't know if you have any, anything else you wanna add on that. No, that's that's fantastic. Cool. Um, so with that, uh, we can move over to the election. Let me just, give me just one second. Is there anyone in the audience that has not filled out the form and wants to nominate themselves? If you do, please go fill out the form with Jenny. Um, so we have, like I mentioned, an online Google form. Um, as of right now, we have five candidates. So we have uh, Catherine has uh, nominated herself to be treasurer again. Um, and Landon has nominated himself for our secretary position. Um, Stephanie has nominated herself to run for re-election as an at-large board member. Sarah Wolf has nominated herself to run as a um, for re-election as an at-large board member. And then Laura Thomas has also uh, nominated to be an at-large board member. Since we don't have, as of right now, we don't have any competitive elections, meaning that nobody's being challenged by someone else, unless there are folks online that have not filled this out. What I'd like to do is give everyone a chance to speak about themselves, um, explain why they're interested in being on the board. Um, and then we'll move, I, what I will most likely do is move that we hold the election by acclamation, which means that we won't vote on any, each individual position. And what we'll do is elect the folks that have filled out the form uh, and been nominated. And then any position that goes unfilled will continue uh, promoting and hopefully get more candidates for next month in February when we'll fill all of those remaining positions. So um, if you're not interested tonight and you want more information, we can talk more um, in the future. So Catherine, I'm gonna start with you just cause uh, you're first on my list for- yeah. All right. Um, Maybe I'm, I'll have you come up here so the okay. folks online can hear. Well, uh, I'm Catherine Mortimer. I have been treasurer for the past few months finishing the previous term um but i love being able to help out i love the neighborhood and want to improve however i can so this is a great community council and i'd love to continue to do what i can thanks uh landon i'll have you go next hey everybody um so i'm landon krasik um with catherine and i we both own busking bus theater company which is a theater company that's dedicated to provide free performance art to Salt Lake City. And we performed here at the Art of the Confluence. And that project has just gotten me so excited to be a part of like building things and building community and being involved and being able to connect with people. Um, and I really, really love Glendale. I had no idea that when I moved here two years ago that I would just fall in love with it so much. So. Um, I'm just so excited to be a part of it, get my hands in everything and make uh, connections with everyone. So excited. Thanks. Um, Stephanie, I'll have you go next. And Stephanie uh, is nominated for an at-large board position. Like Turner said, I'm Stephanie. I also love my neighborhood and like living here and just want to make it a place that people would want to stay instead of just kind of having a touch point. If you buy your first house here, then move somewhere else in the valley. I want I want this to be like a place that we want. I want to stay here. I want to continue making it a place where we want to stay. So I'll do what I can to be a part of that. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move to the folks that are online. Sarah, do you want to go? Yes, I will go. Can Yeah, you can see me OK. Um, and can you see me actually? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I'm Sarah Wolf. Uh, I've been living here in Glendale for three years now. Um, 
And I worked in the arts for many years, probably 25 plus years. Um, and I am passionate about the arts. And um, once the Glendale, when I moved into Glendale, I wanted to get involved with the neighborhood council and um, Turner had initiated the One Glendale Plan, which came from surveys uh, of our community members. And in those surveys, it was apparent that our community members really wanted to see more art, uh, whether it be uh, public visual art or art events um, happening in our neighborhood. And so I started the Arts Committee and um, we have a great team on our arts committee, which includes actually Catherine and um, Landon, who you just heard speak. Um, and we have some exciting things going on, but we always need uh, help to make these things happen. Um, so I am really excited. I, I love working with, uh, with our team and I love doing things uh, with and for our community members in, in the world of the arts. Thanks, Sarah. And is Lara online? I don't think so. Sorry. Okay. Um, anyone else in person? All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to move that we hold the election by acclamation, and what that would mean is that uh, Catherine would become treasurer again, Landon would become secretary, Stephanie would be reelected as an at-large board member, as would Sarah, uh, and then Laura Thomas, did I get that name, last name right? Yeah. Uh, Laura Thomas would be elected as an at-large board member as well, uh, and then the other positions, that would be four at-large board positions would remain unfilled and we will plan to fill those in the February meeting. So hopefully we can recruit more people and get more folks involved between now and the next meeting. Uh, before we vote on this, is everybody clear what's happening and why? Just wanna make sure, okay. So I'll motion that we uh, elect the slate as presented by acclamation. Uh, and I'll second that. All right, uh, all in favor, we're gonna do a raise of hands. If anyone objects, um, we'll do no's next. Was someone speaking online? I'm sorry, I was going to say yes or whatever. Thank you. Um, so with that, if we could do a show of hands in favor of uh, electing the slate by acclamation. All right, uh, any opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so next we're gonna move on to Salt Lake City updates. Council Member Pui. I, uh, thank you. I, let me just say this uh, about your leadership, and your leadership, and all of your leadership. I um, go to a lot of community councils, I just came from the downtown one, and, um, I have my, the district grew, so I have more community councils to go to. And I used to attend older community councils back in the day. Um, and this is different in a good way. Um, and there is something special about what is happening here. Um, and uh, this positive energy and uh, desire to make this community even better is different. Um, you should realize that there is something uh, special about what you're doing. So um, just that first. And I, we just finished yesterday the third uh, council meeting of the year. Um, and the council uh, elected new leadership um, on the redevelopment agency. The council elected Darren Mano uh, to be the chair and the vice chair, Victoria Petrasher from District 1 uh, as the vice chair of the council. Um, and uh, they uh, elected me to be the, the direct the chair of their redevelopment agency, the RDA, and uh, Amy Fowler from District Seven to be the vice chair of the RDA. And this is important to me uh, uh, to be the, the chair of the RDA because the RDA has a lot of tools to redevelop and to put money on things quick, much quicker than the city. Uh, the RDA has funds, uh, lots of money. 
uh, to make a change. Granted, the money needs to be used in specific areas in a specific matter. There's a lot of rules and state puts on how you can use that money. Um, and we have in uh, the West Side, a couple of RDA districts, redevelopment agents, the redevelopment districts, one in North Temple uh, and one in the Nine Line. And the Nine Line is funky and strange, but it's a good way because it's large. So that means that we can put a lot of money on different projects in there. So um, that to me was very important. Those two RDA districts do have a lot of activity for many years. And, we're missing an opportunity. So that to me was focus number one and my, my, my energy is there. I uh, was the RDA vice chair last year. Uh, um, uh, and uh, so that's exciting. Now, uh, just to tell you a little bit about the process, in the next couple of weeks, uh, the, the council members were gonna meet together and talk about what are our priorities for the next year. And obviously all of us will have, last year we had, you know, it lasted like three hours. Uh, you know, I'm talking about all the things that we want to do, and unfortunately, we're going to do all the things we want to do because there's not enough time and there's not enough research and there's not enough money. Um, so, but those meetings are useful because then we find coincidence, you know, like we find common ground saying, Oh, Amy Fowler in District 7 wants to work on this issue, and I want to work on this issue, and we didn't know that. Um, and then their Emano wants to work on that issue. And now we have three. Three is very close to four. Four is a magic number on the council. Four is a vote. Four, you can pass anything. You, have, you can make anything happen with four votes. So, so that helps us decide what things are close to a vote. So it helps us, it helps the staff prioritize. So it helps the staff to get things together and the administration understand what we want to accomplish. So that's going to happen in the next in the next few weeks. Um, we're working on picking the date for that. Um, just very quickly on a few things that happened this this last three meetings. Uh, UTA on demand. UTA gave us an update on their project. You know, you can actually use UTA on demand now to you know go to use uh, public transport transportation. Uh, they give us a, a you know the pilot program is a huge success for the West Side. Um, they are very impressed with the growth trajectory, how many people, thousands of people are using the UTA on demand here on the West Side. It's only available in Salt Lake City and basically District 1 and 2. Um, so uh, now there is a few hiccups with, it, with that growth. So there's a lot, there is some uh, slow, uh, you know, there's, sometimes there is no available vehicles because there's so many people using them. So UTA is talking to us, Salt Lake City is putting a lot of money into this program um, make, to make it happen, uh, to see if there is a gap in there. Hopefully we can bridge that gap eventually if the fund, funds uh, allow, allow us. Um, accessory dwelling units. Yesterday we had a long conversation about ADUs. Um, I got, it took some, you know, some people were not very happy about some things I said. I want to see more ADUs happen in the city. And I know there are concerns about them, um, but what the administration is, is, is suggesting us to do is to make them permanent use. So no conditional use. So basically when you want to build an ADU in your house, you need to go through all this very long and extensive process through the city to get it approved. Uh, and it's only approved in certain areas of the city. This will allow it in, in most of the city to be permitted. So you still need to get a permit, but it's not very long, it's not cumbersome, it's much faster to get them, to get them uh, approved. Um, and uh, there's many reasons for that. Um, the administration has found that there are no problems with the rule, with how it works, so might as well just make it happen. It would allow to create a lot of housing, um, but there is a concern. Uh, many of them will turn into Airbnbs. That is a concern I have. And, we want to solve that problem. And we are actually working with the legislature. That's a problem that touches the legislature. Uh, so right now we are not able to enforce our current ordinance uh, with the, how the legislature prohibits, pro prohibits us from using internet to enforce our laws. So we're working on that, on that angle. The legislature is in second day today in session. So I spend most of my day talking to legislators about some of these issues. Hopefully we can make it happen. It seems like this year we're actually going to make some positive movement in this. Moab and um, places near uh, national parks are struggling with housing because most of their towns are Airbnbs. So now we have an issue that rural Utah 
and the capital city coincide, which is a great opportunity to find common grounds and find friends among you know cities that sometimes don't get along, but we should. Um, so uh, you know, this administration gave you an update about trees and urban forestry, and I have. I don't know if you follow the meetings, I have opinions about trees. I want a lot of trees, but I want them to survive. And we haven't been doing that great at that. Um, and uh, you probably heard the news about the ballpark uh, at the bees leaving. Uh, it's obviously very sad. Um, and uh, obviously the administration and us were talk, you know, involved in this for a while and they're leaving. Um, so what's gonna happen on this space is, is key to this neighborhood and to the whole, the, the health of the city really. Um, so the, the administration released a competition uh, and anybody could apply. So what could you, what would you like to see on this? Uh, and you can win some money for winning that competition. It's kind of fun. Um, now the administration is working on other new updates on that and hopefully there's other things uh, being released in the future related to that space. Um, and I just wanted to bring about the UDOT and the, Possible, ex possible expansion of the freeway. Um, and uh, obviously this is not, Salt City doesn't have the authority to tell you that not you can do that. Um, I wish we could, but we cannot. Um, but you know, your opinion does matter on that. On that, on, on that. We need to keep on pressuring, uh, you know, you don't to do the, what is right. Uh, and it's a hard thing because they are set on expanding the freeway. Um, but we need to make sure that they ra we raise the concerns on the, on the community. Uh, you know, right now, what I can get and what I'm trying to work with them is working on and on uh, with underpasses. Right now, they are you know dark, they are dirty, they don't look good. Um, you know, can we actually negotiate with them and says if you're going to do this, if I cannot stop you for the love of my, my life, well, can you make sure that our underpasses are safe, or they look good, and you know they they actually you know not this or in this places sometimes. So I'm working on that and trying to see if I can get something for the community from that. Obviously, I really don't want them to expand it. I don't think we need it. Um, you know, I wish they put the money in public transportation, but you know, that's another fight uh, for, you know, we still having that fight. But yeah, I don't know, that's my update. I hope to give you more specifics uh, on things that are happening here in Glendale very soon. Um, and I don't know, do you have any questions for me? I have a question. Um, thanks for everything you do, by the way. Anyway, um, I wonder if you, I haven't seen anything that you have said anything about you know, um, Peter Hauser's plan with the shacks that he wants to put up. Um, I saw Victoria made a comment, but I was wondering where you are on that and just figuring and worrying about possibly that coming to our area location. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and you're, you're, uh, just to give everybody context, uh, yes, you know, former Senator Peter Kauser, which is, he doesn't like to be called this, but the homeless czar for the state, he's been appointed to be the person who's trying to solve uh, or come up with ideas to solve the issue of, of those experiencing homelessness. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, he's proposing. Uh, Oh, he's working on a project that would allow um, sanctioned campaign. Um, and uh, there's a lot of issues and he's very much aware of this and he's working through all of those issues and trying to make it as uh, safe and as, as good as possible. Um, and uh, the site is, is something that everybody will have opinions about. Um, the site uh, apparently uh, is, a, it will have to be state owned. Uh, you know, the state owns a dollar land. Um, and there is, a, there is a conversation I heard. It's not, I haven't never gotten any official document on this because they're still working through this. It might be, you know, uh, in, in the border of between, you know, uh, West Valley and Salt Lake City, uh, way west, uh, 50, 5600 west or something along this line. Very, very far. Now, um, in general, uh, I'm a proponent of sanctioned campaign. Um, I visited uh, Denver about 15 times the last few years, and I visited this SOS, uh, you know, safe outdoor spaces in Denver about 10 times. I met with their uh, executive director three times. Uh, they're fantastic. And if you go to Denver, you will be impressed with them. Has it solved homelessness? No. Has it, has it stopped tents from popping in places? No. Um, has it minimized the issue? Yes. 
has it made it better for many neighborhoods? Yes. Um, how did, do they have good numbers to show about people going through that process and moving into housing? Yes. So now, will that, is that the solution for us? Oh no, it's the state who's looking into solution, which I'm actually very excited. In the past, it used to be Salt Lake City only looking at this. Um, so I'm actually excited that the state is like looking into all the options and trying to find money too, that is not Salt Lake City money. So yes, there's a lot of concerns. Should it be in the West Side? You know, should it be, you know, what are they gonna do about safety, right? Like, are they gonna like give us more money to like make sure that the community is safe? But, but, you know, this and the transportation, how is people going to get there? I mean, you know, there's a lot of questions to be answered, but uh, I trust that your house has a car in the right place. And um, we're talking to him quite often. Um, I know the administration and Andrew Johnston, you know, who served in, in the council in this district before me, uh, or before before me, um, is talking with him all the time. So we are sharing our concerns all the time. Um, but I, in, in some ways, I'm excited that someone is looking at this beyond Salt Lake City. Yeah. Um, this is a question from Facebook. Um, from Shelly. Um, I guess there's been several neighbors that have had problems with um, seeing their bail consistently from the post office. Have you heard anything about that? Is there a way we can work with them? Very interesting uh, that you bring that up. Today I had a constituent call saying, asking me about the West Side, the council meeting on the West Side, and that the flyer that they got today in the mail said July 17, uh, if I remember right which is a Wednesday. And she was like, no, it should be on a Tuesday, right? And I said to this neighbor, it's actually the flyer from last year and they got it today. Uh, so I was kind of like kind of shocked that their, their mail is delayed by like six plus months. I, you know, so I, I actually got some reports of that. Uh, the city doesn't, you know, we don't, it's, you know, it's a federal service, you know, the federal government runs this, but uh, there is ways of us I have a relationship with the union, uh, the, the, the mail carrier union. Uh, and I actually reached out to, to the representative from the union before about an issue in my neighborhood. And he was able to solve it. So if they're willing to send me their address, uh, I'm happy to forward it to the union and seeing what's going on. Um, and I know that they, they're struggling with hiring, they're struggling with retention. Um, I am not sure if this is the issue, but I could try to help. Um, I very much appreciate the council and Mayor Bounds. You guys are doing great stuff. Uh, and this might be outside of your jurisdiction, but I was wondering if there's any conversations happening around the Great Salt Lake. Um, we, yes, in general, uh, we, we're talking a lot about water, which, you know, that is the issue with the Great Salt Lake. Um, we're working a lot about water. We actually had um, quite a bit of conversations in the last meetings about water. Um, the city, uh, it isn't, you know, we get reports every week about like our, you know, the Salt Lake City administers the water for a big chunk of the county. Uh, so not only Salt Lake City, because we are such an old city, so we have all these water rights that are way beyond all of these other cities that exist. So we own land and the canyon way beyond, you know, the city boundaries. So we administer all these resources, so we are very in tune on this. Uh, Salt Lake City is doing quite a bit of work in producing, uh, you know, the, you know how much water, you know, even though the, our growth has been exponential, our water has been not that exponential, which is good. It doesn't mean that we are there. We need to do a lot more. Uh, we are working. I am working on, and I talked to the administration yesterday and see if there is hope that they would like to champion this because it's an administrative thing. Uh, but it's about creating a rebate for updating our controllers to smart controllers. Um, the state has one, but it is to help with, with in that subsidy to make it even a bit cheaper. Um, it, why is that it, Why is that important? Um, if you drive around, you will see people watering their lawns when it's raining uh, because they're set on the timer, right? Um, and those new uh, controllers, which are like 70, Dollars uh, will stop when they're, they're connected to the weather, so they just don't water when it's raining. 
and they don't water the next day either because they know it's wet, you know, and they know if it rains on the X amount, they will know water the whole week. So that's one of the things that we're, we're working on. Our, you know, our parks are on. We have problems with that too. So we need to upgrade that. So we're working on trying to come up with a budget for trying to find money to upgrade maybe one park every so often. Um, many of our parks have like very old infrastructure that needs to be raised out. So once you touch it, you're sort of like, oh, I need to change it all. So we're talking a lot about water in general. Uh, we're talking about creating a campaign. The mayor, uh, the administration told us about a campaign to save water. Um, that's the extent of it. Um, we have probably the best expert on water in the state that works for the city. Um, uh, she's like nationally known for her expertise. We're very lucky to have her. Um, so if there is a specific idea, really, or thoughts, or, you know, I please let me know. I will put you in touch. She is brilliant. Okay. Cool. I guess, like, I just want to second that, like, that's an issue that I'm very interested in getting resolved. Um, I grew up sailing on the Great Salt Lake my whole life, and we can't anymore. So, very real. So, I, I know you're working on it, but thank you for uh, working on it and keep pushing. <laughs> and it will take all of us, right? It really right. will take all of us to change a little bit how we live. It's really easy to be better and not having that much grass. It's, I know as an immigrant, um, sorry, I don't want to take care of it for me, but as an immigrant, Americans um, have this association with wealth and grass. That is very interesting to me. Um, and I know that grass is, is useful. You know, if you use it, I think it's fantastic. You know, if you have kids, if you have pets. But we water a lot of grass that is unusable. You know, our parking strips, our front yards, and no one, I don't know, most, most of us don't sit in the front yard. We'd like to sit in the back. You know, we want our privacy. So we need to just change our culture a little bit. Um, and uh, there is a few classes out there. The water, what is it? Water conservancy district from, what is it? South Valley, I don't remember the place. They have a garden. They teach you the classes for five bucks. I took all of them years ago. They're fantastic. You can actually upgrade your own yard yourself. It's very fun. It's a great way to lose weight if you are interested. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions online? Doesn't look like it. Uh, let's move on to Detective Oliver. Uh, Detective Oliver, can you? Yeah, sorry. It took me a minute to find the new button. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. All right. Start off. Any questions, concerns, things that uh, we're seeing in our neighborhood that um, need to be brought up? Questions, concerns? Uh, do you want to just give an overview of the district and then we can do questions after? Sure. Um, what we've been working on mostly is uh, is a lot of RVs that have been in the in the community, um, 17 South specifically, uh, and then they're just kind of spread out throughout the western side of the industrial area. So we've really been working on a lot of um, trying to get um, one them into either housing or, or whatever, but also to mitigate some of the the crimes that are occurring with those with those RVs. We're also been working on the river uh, itself. Um, around Fremont Park, not Fremont Park, sorry, Fremont Ave, um, the bend in the river uh, has been a consistent um, issue we've been hearing about and we've been con trying to consistently work on. Um, that's what we've been seeing as far as my end. And then I'll just go over some quick numbers. Um, and these are just for this year, which is, is really what, 14, 19 days? Is that what we're into, the, into January? So for, for year to date, we're, the numbers are looking pretty good. The most um, discouraging thing we're seeing is domestic violence. Uh, we're increasing in domestic violence assaults as well as ag assaults non-family. So those are uh, assaults that have occurred and that's specifically to district two. Um, for a five-year average, uh, we're only up one. So we usually see um, the first two weeks in January, we usually see two domestic violence cases on the west are on the district two and four aggravated assaults non-domestic related so we're only up one from there um so that's that's kind of a, a number that we want to try and maintain we're also seeing um an increase so in um 
some residential burglaries, we've just seen a, a real slight increase in that. Uh, we've, all, we've had 32 total crimes um, in District 2 in 2023. So that's, um, you know, your robberies, your assaults, your burglaries, your larcenies. The biggest number we're seeing is, is larcenies is up, is up a little bit more than we'd like to see. Um, but 32 crimes in District 2, reported crimes in District 2 um, over 19 days. Eh, we're averaging we're just, just over one a day. So um, that's a concern. We want to see that go away if we can. So uh, one thing I do want to, to just bring bring out is if you're not familiar with your license plate, um, this is kind of an odd request, but just take a place uh, a picture of your own license plate and check on it regularly to make sure you have your front and your rear plate. We're seeing a lot of um, what are called ghost uh, vehicles where they will take the same uh, make, model, and year plate that they've stolen and use that plate on the stolen vehicle and sometimes even put that stolen plate on the vehicle that uh, they've taken the other plate from. So that's a concern. Um, just be aware of that. Uh, that's pretty much it. If there's any questions or, or concerns, then feel free to yell at me. Any questions in person uh, or online? All right. Doesn't look like it. Thank you, Detective. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, the mayor's office was not able to be here tonight. Uh, they just asked that I mention the ballpark planning process that Council Member Pui already mentioned. Um, we'll be sure when we get information from them, we'll be sure to share that in our newsletter. Um, and then our state elected officials are not presenting tonight. As Council Member Pui mentioned, yesterday was the start of the session. Um, but we are working with Angel, uh, Representative Romero um, and Senator Plum and Senator Escamilla to plan a town hall where they will be just talking about legislative session. Um, it's going to be in the next three weeks. We're just kind of working on scheduling and getting that uh, figured out. And as soon as we do, we'll get that out to everyone. It will most likely be only on Zoom. We won't be doing in person just because they're up at the Capitol and their schedules are pretty crazy right now. Um, but it'll be similar to what we've done in years past, where it just they'll talk for probably 10 or 15 minutes and then it'll be full Q&A. So questions like the Great Salt Lake or other state level issues um, that we would normally address in this meeting, we will bring up at that meeting. Um, at our February meeting, we are going to be filling four at-large board seats. So if you're inspired to get involved after this meeting or you know someone, we really, really want this council to be representative of the neighborhood. We want folks to be involved and we want new ideas uh, to be involved. So please, please get involved uh, if you have any interest. If you want more information, I am very willing to meet with you and share how things work, um, share the things that we've been able to accomplish and how you might be able to, to get involved. Um, other than that, unless there are questions or concerns that need to be brought up, um, we uh, can adjourn. There was a question online. Uh, Detective Oliver, are you still there? I am. Uh, Ryan, would you read your question out loud just so that the folks uh, in person can also hear it? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can. Hey, Detective, aside from keeping an eye on our vehicle plates, what else can we do in our neighborhood, on our streets, uh, in our yards and inside of our homes to help help with that current trend of one crime per day in the neighborhood? Sure. Great question. Um, the most important thing is getting to know your neighbors. That sounds kind of weird, but uh, if you get to know your neighbors, your neighborhood, um, then it becomes really strong. Uh, I'm just making sure you can hear me. Yeah, we can. Okay. <laughs> so just get to know your neighbors. That way you know what's going on, you know, necessarily in your neighborhood. Um, who's, who's different or shouldn't be in the neighborhood. Um, just kind of a general, general aspect is, is neighborhoods that know each other tend to um, work better together and know what's going on. Uh, that's, that's a big thing. And then as far as cars are concerned, um, it's really simple. Just make sure you don't have anything valuable in, in your car that can be seen. Uh, that's the biggest thing is, is if there's a, a package or a, a purse or something that's in the car, and somebody walks by it, chances are they're going to try and they're going to try and grab that. So those are just two really easy, simple things to, to work on. Um, but, but remember to call. That's one thing we're seeing a lot of issues is we're just not getting some phone calls about crimes that are occurring. So if something happens, we do need to hear about it, whether you, you call it in or you get a case number online. Um, please 
make sure it's it's reported so we can get get uh, kind of a, a history and get a hot spot going in that area so we can we can focus on it those are three of the um, really good things just to work on or to look at uh, to to solve some of the crimes that are in the area thank you great thanks yeah you bet thank you uh I don't see any more questions, but before we wrap up, uh, I just wanna extend a sincere thank you to our outgoing board members. So our outgoing secretary, Taylor Thurman, uh, served two years and is transitioning out. So thank you, Taylor. Uh, and then our at-large board members who are transitioning out, Levi de Oliveira, uh, who was actually appointed to the planning commission and is now representing our neighborhood and district on the planning commission and doing a great job. Um, Scott Horton, Thank you, Emily Jordao. Thank you, Stephen Kopanik. Thank you, and JC Miller. Thank you. Thank you all for being involved. Um, congratulations to our new secretary, Landon. I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name because I'll just slaughter it right now. Uh, and then Catherine Mortimer, our continuing treasurer. Uh, and then Stephanie Finley, uh, Sarah Wolf, and Lara uh, Thomas, uh, our new at large board members or continuing at large board members. So, Thank you all for being here. Thanks everybody.